Hello everybody! Hey, welcome to Lab 11! And this is all about galaxy classifications. This is a cool lab. It'll give you a chance to look at a lot of beautiful pictures of galaxies, figure out something about what they mean. I'm going to start that process with you right now. And uh, let's take a look. This is actually a website uh, on Wikipedia. <clears throat> called the Hubble sequence. It shows you the right here. You can see the Hubble classification scheme We'll see that later on the actual lab itself. So I'm going to go by that here I want to just show you a few galaxies to sort of orient you to this whole thing. Here's a beautiful one. This is a um, Elliptical galaxy you can see it right here uh, It looks kind of elliptical. It looks kind of featureless and that's the way they usually look what can I say? It's it's not exactly true that if you've seen one elliptical galaxy, you've seen them all, but sometimes it seems like that. Notice <clears throat> it looks sort of like a uh, soft football. Uh, there isn't the, all this other stuff in front of it is, is foreground stars. It does does seem to be a brighter center, but that's just about it. And this this galaxy has a catalog name. This is European Southern Observatory, ESO, by the way. This happens to be a big, giant elliptical galaxy, and there it is, friends. Now you know. Let's go ahead and, and take the next one. Uh, this is another strange, uh, sort of unusual galaxy. This is what's called a lenticular. We'll show you that in the... Um, classification system we get there. This one has a NGC number 5866. It has, also has a name, the Spindle Galaxy. And here you see something that looks a lot like an elliptical that we just saw, but it is different. Uh, this thing actually has a disk. The disk is edge-on. <clears throat> now, we're going to run into this with a lot of galaxies. Imagine you're sitting at a table. Most of us might be sitting at tables. When you look down at the table, that's called face-on. When you look at the table edge on, that's called edge on. And we're looking at this galaxy edge on. What we're actually looking here, this is the plane of the uh, 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 galaxy itself. This dark thing right here is a dust lane that's actually going through the galaxy. This is sort of unusual. Um, and galaxies like this that have um, a disk, which is what this actually is, edge on, but no arms, and I'll tell you what arms are in a minute, uh, are called... Uh, lenticulars and they're trend they're in the classification they're between ellipticals and spirals and you'll see what that means very shortly in here now let's go on to the next one uh, this is important so I want you to see this and hear the commentary on it this is uh, the pinwheel galaxy this is an this is m101 a famous galaxy <clears throat> obviously it's relatively close to seeing a lot of detail this is friends a spiral gal galaxy this has a specific specific type it's called an sc and uh, these things have um, central bulges that you're looking at it has spiral arms see them there they are spiral arms and they're filled with blue stars very important you notice that color and also the reddish yellowish uh, older stars found in the central bulge now this is a this galaxy is is a disk but it also the, we're looking face on on the disk not edge on face on so you're seeing it in all its beauty this thing uh, you have to keep in mind what these things are uh, these things uh, this one is probably about a hundred thousand light years across that means uh, uh, a beam of light starting on one side would take 100,000 years to go across to the other side. So this is a big object. It's basically like the Milky Way. It probably has at least 100, 100 billion with a B stars in it, probably more. And the blue stars are very, very helpful in terms of the history of this object because blue stars uh, do not live generally longer than, than 10 million years with an M, 10 million years. That's a very short time on the cosmic scale. And so that means that in this galaxy, uh, star formation is ongoing. It's an ongoing process. To make stars, you have to have gas and dust. That means that the, that the disk here, which is very common, by the way, uh, is has significant gas and dust and it's making stars some of which are very bright and have very short lives so there in a, in a nutshell is what you're looking at when you see oh I didn't tell you what a C was 
a C, a C, actually it's a CD, but we'll forget that. It's a C. This means it's a regular spiral, and what it means is that it has a small central bulge and fairly uh, loosely held arms. In other words, notice the arms are kind of going off from the galaxy itself. You'll see a little bit more about that later. This is what you're going to be doing, by the way, um, looking at galaxy pictures and figuring out what they actually are. It's not that hard, really. This is another one. <clears throat> this is NGC, NGC 1300. This is an SB, SBB. And what that means is, notice blue stars in the spiral arm. So this is definitely a spiral. But notice the central bulge looks funny. And that's because it has a bar. Here's the bar. Here's the bar. Here's the normal central bulge, which is interrupted by bars. These things are thought to be due to uh, galaxy collisions that these guys have suffered early in their history. Other than that, it's pretty much like the other one, only not as pretty. Uh, it doesn't have as beautiful spiral arms all over the place. But the story is the same. Uh, plenty of gas and dust. We're making young stars. The young stars, some of them are blue. That means they only live about 10 uh, million years. Remember, the sun lives 10 billion years uh, on its hydrogen on its hydrogen core reserves. So that's about a thousand times longer than the blue stars. The other thing about the blue stars, if you haven't heard this story in a while, is that they produce all the heavy elements in the universe between helium and iron. And uh, during the blast, they produce many of the ones even heavier than iron. So these are extremely important objects. Um, notice this is a barred spiral. The other one was just a normal spiral. And that is, oh wait, no, I lied. We have an irregular here, of course. Let's take a look. Now, irregulars, uh, actually I've written down these little hints uh, in the instructions, and I'm gonna show you those in two seconds, or I'm gonna go over them with you in two seconds. But this is actually a close one, the Large Magellanic Cloud. This guy's about uh, a factor of 10 smaller than Milky Way, even though he's next door. This is what's called a dwarf irregular galaxy. Now, an irregular galaxy is one that is, are you ready? Irregular. <clears throat> Excuse me. What that means is that there's no uh, structure. There is no disk. There is no arms. There's no football-like elliptical. Um, it's pretty much out there. Um, the other interesting thing about irregulars is they can have uh, gas and dust, and they can have blue stars like this one does. It actually is making... Uh, it's making stars is an ongoing process. How do you come, become an irregular galaxy? Probably collisions where this guy got roughed up pretty badly in his collision. By the way, uh, but he's going to get his revenge. Uh, trajectory analysis about six or eight months ago showed that the LMC, which is next door, is actually going to have a major collision with us, the Milky Way, and it's going to basically uh, take us out. Um, the um, uh, supermassive black hole in the center of our galaxy is going to be activated. It'll become, it'll start uh, spewing out x-rays, you know, among other things. It'll be pretty nasty. Most of the hydrogen in our galaxy will be uh, destroyed by the collision. It's not going to be pretty, but it's, it is 3 billion uh, years away. Now, let's go back to the actual lab we're going to be doing. Now it's just sort of a warm-up. This is what we're going to be doing. I'm going to take you through this briefly. How am I doing time-wise? Oh, I'm in big trouble as usual. Here's the famous Hubble classification scheme. Not everybody loves it, but it's very useful in terms of um, it, um, imagining what types of galaxies there are. There are uh, three basic types, elliptical, spirals, and irregulars. Let's look at the ellipticals first. The ellipticals uh, are pretty much featureless. Uh, they don't have blue stars. They don't have um, disks. They certainly don't have arms. And that means that they haven't had any star births in quite a while. So they're basically a dead galaxy, in effect. And notice when they're round, they're called these zeros. When they're sort of like a football, they're called these fives. When they're sort of like a torpedo, <laughs> or whatever that is, they're called E7s, right up to E9s. Um, this is the so-called lenticular, the S0, that's between the ellipticals and the spirals. Remember, we you knew there was a, a barred spiral, there's the bar, and there's the B, and they're normal spirals. And the only difference between the A's and the C's is the, no, the A's have bigger, new, bigger central bulges, 
and their arms are more tightly wound. You don't see a lot of distance between them here. Whereas the SCs have smaller nuclei, see smaller central bulges, and their arms are more loosely wound. That's true for the uh, barred spirals as well. They don't show ellipticals on here, but you've already seen what one of those looks like. Now, let's go on down here. This is the actual lab itself. This thing is going to give you, this gives you some very nice uh, hints as to how to recognize spirals. I've actually gone through several of them with you. Uh, on the um, instruction page, by the way, I, I suggest you print out the instruction sheet as well as the uh, lab itself, this thing we're looking at now, so you can see the whole thing. But don't use the pictures on your photocopy. Use the pictures on the computer so you can see the details much better. Also, under number um, six, on step six, when you go down where it says part two, um, just about halfway down, it says read the classification scheme on page two. That's what we're showing you right now. Uh, I've also given you uh, my own little classification uh, hints as to how to find these things without any trouble, so it'll help you. These are beautiful pictures, we're not going to do anything with them. Here's the actual, this is the first page in your answer sheet, page four. Notice it's got a list here of actual galaxy names. These are galaxy names, M101. Uh, I want you to put the type here, then I want you to give me two or three specific things about what you saw in the galaxy that convince you that this is, say, a um, normal spiral, which would be an SC. That would mean it has a small small uh, central area and uh, loosely held arms. But I want you to say that. In other words, one reason I say that this is uh, an SC is because it has a small central region, loosely held arms, and it has spiral arms, so it's a spiral. Uh, just give me two or three specific things, and it, you don't have to write sentences, just make them little phrasy poos, and it'll be really cool. And there's about two dozen of them or so, and this will give you a chance to look at some pictures. Here are the galaxies right here. Uh, you can, these, the quality of online is fine, and you can make them larger like I'm doing here if you want, and uh, see what's going on. Over here, this is, the names are beneath them, this is M101. It's a famous galaxy. Obviously, we're looking at a spiral. Uh, obviously, we've got spiral arms. We don't have a color picture here, so you can't really see the blue stars, but we know they're there. Uh, this one is more interesting. Oh, let me show you this one. This is the Sombrero Nebula M104, famous galaxy. <laughs> Everybody loves this galaxy. This is an old picture of it, but you can still see it. This, obviously, this thing right here, by the way, this galaxy is almost edge on. Remember when the table was edge on? This is, we're looking at, into the plane of the uh, disk. The galaxy has a disk, but it doesn't have any arms. Surprise! And the only way you can have a disk with no arms is if you have a lenticular S0 galaxy. And that's written down for you in the instructions, so you don't have to write that down. Here's a classic M32, classic, classic elliptical. Looks sort of like the shape of a lemon. No features, no discs. We wouldn't see blue stars if we were looking for them right there. Uh, I'll let you think about that one. Here's another, uh, so forth and so on. Oh, here's the symbol of our class. Well, not it. Did I use that one in this class? I used it in the lectures. It, not in this one, but this is the Whirlpool um, galaxy, along with its friend here, who's undergone a very disastrous collision, and so forth. But anyway, these are the guys you're going to be looking at. They're right here. These copies are more than sufficient in terms of resolution to actually see what's going on, and then you can bring them back the way you want it, and so forth. Uh, how about this galaxy right here? Pretty neat, huh? This one right here. It is the, it's a local group galaxy. <laughs> this is actually a galaxy right there. And that's something for you to think about when you get down there to that one and so forth. I think that's, oh, here's a, this is a, obviously over here, M95 on the right side. This is obviously a bar, in case you're wondering. So this is a spiral, but it's a barred spiral. Interesting galaxy. Now keep in mind, if you're curious, how many galaxies are there in the observable universe? There's between somewhere between 500 billion and a trillion. That those are the estimates of actual galaxies in the observable universe. So we're only looking at a small fraction of them. <laughs>
because uh, it would take many, many, many lifetimes to be able to do that. Now, here's one I wanted to show you, especially 4565. Let's bring it over here. There it is. Uh, this is a true edge on 4565. Notice we can uh, we can see the central bulge. Uh, it has a disc, and this thing is screaming edge on spiral. Now we can't tell exactly what we can't see bars or no bars here, but we can see something uh, even more interesting, and that's notice this big black line here. This is the dust lane that sits in the uh, in the equator in the disk of this galaxy. That's the stuff of which uh, planets in particular are made. That's why our galaxy looks something like that uh, for people that are edge on with us. Now I'm not going to go through all of these because uh, I don't want you uh, I, you want to have some fun doing this. Now the second part two we're going to do this is um, about colors. Uh, this is kind of cool. And there's some, let me show you the galaxies you're going to be looking at. They're in color, of course. <laughs> and uh, uh, the thing you're going to be noticing here is that the central areas are sort of uh, yellowish, reddish, and the arms tend to be uh, blue. And that's because we have blue stars out here and yellowish, reddish stars here. And you may remember from last time that yellowish, reddish stars are... Uh, old stars that are sort of on the tail end of their lives on the main sequence, whereas the blue stars are roaring youngsters that are still uh, burning hotly for the first 10 million years. And uh, this is obviously a um, elliptical galaxy, but it doesn't have any blue stars. We could finally see that here and so forth. Um, I'm not going to tell you what 6745 is, right, because this is much too interesting. And it, 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 when you read it, you'll see it's undergoing an interaction. That means it's being uh, attacked gravitationally by uh, another galaxy down here. And there's some interesting things with blue stuff right here. And you already know what blue stuff means. Uh, this galaxy is edge on, by the way, 5364. That's a dust land like we saw before. And so they're just going to ask you a few simple questions like that. You don't have to do number E because uh, I don't want to get into red and pink stuff. It's hard to see and uh, it takes us far afield from where we want to go anyway. So just forget E. And then uh, the third part, this is the last part for us. How am I doing? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, we're looking at galaxy environments here. This is basically, oh, now we're starting to, starting to see galaxy clusters. Galaxies actually uh, exist in clusters, in groups. And this is one of them right here, and you can look at individual. What, the ones we're going to look at specifically uh, are the Coma Cluster and the Hercules Cluster, and here they are. And here's the Coma Cluster. Let me make it smaller so you can see it better. There it is right there. <clears throat> now, the interesting thing is, with the exception of this uh, diffraction pattern right here, all the stars in this, all, excuse me, all the uh, objects in this frame are all galaxies. This is the only star. So you have to get your mind around that. And when you look at these, you should be able to see that they're a specific type. A lot of them are. And uh, that's an important hint as to what's going on. Um, and I make a comment about that in the instructions that will that's supposed to be a hint that will help you. This is the Hercules cluster. Remember, these are clusters that can have hundreds or even thousands of galaxies in them. However, look, look, these galaxies don't look anything like the ones you were seeing in the Coma cluster. That's because some of them are spirals. And if you look carefully and make the, make the screen bigger, for example, you can actually see them much better that way. And they're in color, so it makes it very nice. And that is actually, yeah, we're not doing part four. We're not doing the lab report, which is just more, which is just not as much fun as this is. Then you're going to answer a couple of questions about this. They're going to have you count uh, in the coma cluster uh, the number of elliptical spiral and irregular galaxies. That's going to be easier than you think. <laughs> and then uh, also in the uh, Hercules clusters. The idea here, uh, I'll tell you how it's supposed to work, is that the spiral galaxies, when they collide, uh, can turn into ellipticals. And that's because the gas and dust are actually what do most of the colliding in, when the galaxies collide, not the stars themselves. So there's a big hint as to what's going on. And I think that's it for right now.